So today I wanted to give you a quick little list of books that would be a good starting point if you're interested in starting to read classics. I wanted to just give a list of some classics that I think are generally accessible and not too intimidating and that are just generally enjoyable so that um, you have kind of a good first impression for classics and I wanted to give a variety of different kinds of classics from uh, different eras and in different genres so that you can really sort of dip your toes in and get a feeling for them. So the first one that I'm going to recommend to you is Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. This was published in the 40s so it is a more modern book that you might feel more comfortable starting with. The language is definitely a bit more antiquated but it's not quite so bad as jumping in with say Charles Dickens or Thomas Hardy or something like that. This is a really exciting, really sort of lovely story. It takes place in the 1600s in Devon in England and it follows this noble woman who wants to just escape from her life at court. So she leaves to go to her country home without her husband to just have a sort of escape and when she gets there she realizes that things aren't quite as they left them and quite as she and her husband had thought that they were. There is a new butler working in the house that they don't really remember hiring and there's just sort of weird occurrences that are going on and the butler seems a little bit shady and there's a high incidence rate of piracy. There is a high incidence of piracy and she finds out that this one pirate has sort of made her estate home in Devon his like home base for operations because they're almost never there and it's really well situated so she ends up kind of ingratiating herself into this pirate's life and finally finding that freedom that she was looking for. So it is really fun, it's a romance, it's an adventure story, it's historical fiction and it's also really small so it's pretty easy to get through. It's very descriptive. Um, it's really evocative of Demon, which I really liked. You really sort of feel like you're there. I mean, it's a pirate story, so it seems like a really great place to start with classics if you are a little bit frightened of them. And it is more of a modern story, so you can sort of ease yourself in if you'd like. Next up, I would recommend Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. This is a Canadian classic and it's a children's classic. So it's definitely, the writing is really accessible, it's a pretty small story as well, and it has a lot of themes that it follows and a lot of meaning within it, but it is pretty simplistic because it does generally get marketed as a children's classic. So it's definitely an easy sort of stress-free read and you don't have to get too hung up on long-winded complicated sentences and really archaic syntax or anything like that. This really is free of all of that, even though it was published in like 1908 or 1910. The voice is still really fresh and sh it's really sort of a snarky book um, under the surface and it's just really funny, it's really heartwarming and it's just a great story. It's really well loved for a reason and I think it is a great starting point for reading classics as well. Anne of Green Gables, of course, is about Anne Shirley, who is an orphan who gets adopted by mistake by Matthew and Marilla Cuthbert. They think that they're adopting a boy from the orphanage because they want somebody to help them out on the farm. And then this spunky red-headed girl arrives and they don't know quite what to do with her. They at first want to send her back, but she ends up endearing herself to them and becoming an integral part of their lives and a staple in the town of Avonlea where they live. And there's a whole bunch of shenanigans, adventures, mishaps that Anne goes on and you really just can't help but love her and fall in love with everybody else in the story. You can read it as a standalone but there are also seven other books in the series. You follow Anne through her entire life. Next, I think a great starting point for classics is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This was published in 1886. It's very small. This isn't even all... this is two stories involved in this volume. So it's more of just a short story, but of course it's a really iconic story that uh, works its way into popular culture a lot and I think it's really well written. It's definitely a bit more archaic than Frenchman's Creek and Anne of Green Gables, so the language might be a bit tougher to fall into. Since it is really small, it's kind of a good starting point for that because you can definitely get through the story without absorbing every single little detail and it's easy to go back and read again for a more fuller understanding. 
This, of course, is a story about Dr. Jekyll, who makes this crazy concoction that when he drinks it, he becomes this alter ego that houses all of the negative traits of Dr. Jekyll, and he goes out and sort of wreaks havoc, and nobody knows how to stop this criminal, they can never find him, and Dr. Jekyll ends up with this moral dilemma of um, regretting what he's done, even though it's this fantastic discovery and um, what he should do to sort of do it. So it's a really interesting surface story, and there's a lot of uh, implications underneath as well about um, split personality and uh, humans' capacity for evil, and what if we could separate the, our good and evil selves and what would be left. So I think this is um, a really great jumping off point for classics, since it is a story that you probably already know, but maybe don't know everything behind it. So even though it's really small, it still sort of packs the punch of the kind of literary explorations that classics can go through. And I think that if you like this one, it will give you sort of a taste to go to other classics and see this sort of themes and ideas that propel them forward and make them so interesting for us to read still. But it does so in a way that doesn't, you know, take up 680 pages and 200,000 words. It's just really short and sweet and to the point. It still has such lasting cultural power. We still have it in our cultural memory. So yeah, I think this is another great jumping off place for reading classics. Now, not to be basic on Maine, but I do think that Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen is a really great starting point for classics as well. Just such a quintessential Regency novel plotline that I think makes it a really rewarding classic um, to sort of start your journey with. And I mean, I know everybody says this, but they do say it for a reason. It, the writing is pretty accessible, easy to get into, um, easy to get through with, with a generally straightforward plot to follow through. You don't really need to have like a really in-depth understanding of Regency society to get through it. I mean, on top of it, it has like the greatest romance of all time involved in it, which is just like a bonus. There's definitely a reason this one always comes up in these sort of beginning classics videos because it is a really great one. It was my first classic and it really snowballed <laughs> into all of this other reading that I'm doing, so I would highly recommend Pride and Prejudice and then moving on to some of Jane Austen's other works if you're just getting into classics because she really has the capacity to make you fall in love with her books and her writing and just everything about them. And obviously there's a ton of adaptations that you can watch too. Um, to sort of supplement your reading as well, and there's so much discussion videos on YouTube about Pride and Prejudice, so this is definitely a tried and true um, entranceway into reading classics, I think. And if you don't know, this is the story of Elizabeth Bennet, who is one of five sisters. Her mother is really intent on getting all five of her daughters married so that their futures can kind of be secured. Elizabeth Bennet's life sort of gets turned upside down when a wealthy neighbor moves into the estate near them in their town, and he brings this really grumpy sort of aloof friend with him, and everything snowballs from there. The neighbor starts really falling for Elizabeth's sister and his friend is just the worst and gets off on the, the total wrong foot with Elizabeth. Kind of a series of unfortunate events follows and it blossoms into an amazing love story and a great commentary on social class. This last one, it kind of will probably be a surprise, but just hear me out. It's the Odyssey, but specifically I am recommending to you this translation by Emily Wilson. It came out two years ago. If you've ever tried to read the Odyssey or had to read it in school, it was probably a translation from a really long time ago. Um, even as, um, as modern translations as like the 70s or 80s, they can still feel really convoluted and hard to get through. And definitely the ones from before that, from, you know, the 1900s and the 1800s and things like that, they are really sort of try hard and they're really trying to apply the styles of their times to it, which just muddles the story even further. The Odyssey is, of course, a really ancient story from ancient Greece. So it already has its own sort of set of expectations to go along with it, and for modern readers trying to read this ancient story through the lens of people writing 200 years ago, it really doesn't work unless you have, like, a professor holding your hand reading it. And I think Emily Wilson does a great job of eliminating that need. Her translation is really unpretentious. It's so easy to read. 
it flows really well and it's all done in a modern voice she keeps it in verse as well so it's a bit less intimidating because um you you're sort of flipping through it fast as you're reading it it's split up into chapters so there's a lot of um, obvious breakpoints and things like that and even though it feels and seems like a really intimidating story if you have Emily Wilson's translation I think it could serve as a pretty good sort of segue into reading classic literature especially if you're interested in like the classics from ancient Greece and ancient Rome and things like that or even if you want to understand some of the themes from more Victorian and 18th century classics and things like that, a, lo a lot of them will harken back to the Odyssey. If you're able to read this one, specifically this translation, I think you'll find it really rewarding. Um, this of course is the story of Odysseus. It is after the Trojan War. Um, everybody else has kind of already gone home, but Odysseus and his crew um, displeased some of the gods on their way out of Troy and now the gods are making it really hard for them to get home. It's already, it when it begins, it's seven years after the Trojan War has ended and Odysseus is stranded on Calypso's island. And we start with a look at Odysseus's son, Telemachus, and his wife, Penelope, back on Ithaca. And then we get the rest of the tale sort of recounted to us. If you've read Circe by Madeline Miller and you enjoyed it, then you might be more inclined to read the Odyssey because Circe obviously does appear in this book. It would maybe add some context to your next reread of Circe. I really, really enjoyed the Odyssey. I read the Iliad as well, but the Odyssey was my favorite. And I mean, I'm really hoping that Emily Wilson will also make a translation of the Iliad. To me personally, reading this, and especially this translation, it just makes it really obvious to me why the Odyssey has stayed um, so prevalent, even our modern literature, and um, so relevant in a lot of our media today. There's a lot of similar themes that um, remain relatable even, you know, 2,000 years later. But again, please don't just get like a $2 version of the Odyssey because it's probably going to be like Alexander Pope's translation or something from the 1800s and that one is so pretentious and convoluted and just so run on and you don't get any of those problems in Emily Wilson's translation. So I feel pretty confident in recommending this version of the Odyssey to you because, again, it is a familiar story that you probably know a lot of the characters and the themes from. And plus, a bonus, like, if you read this, then you get bragging rights to say that you read the Odyssey. So, um, there is an introduction that Emily Wilson wrote and there's a lot of notes that go along with it. So if you're reading this and you're still feeling lost by some of the references in the language, uh, Emily Wilson still has your back. And yeah, just generally, I believe in you. So those are some classics that I feel are a great starting point if you're new to the genre and you just want to get your feet wet and um, try out a few different things in a few different styles. And if you're concerned about starting to get into classics, don't be. It's, you know, it's okay if you start them and you hate them. You don't need to love classics. They aren't this, like, pinnacle of literature that if you don't like them, um, if you find them tedious or boring, like, you know, like, you aren't not smart because of that. I think we really sort of hold classics of all kinds on a pedestal and when you think about it, it really doesn't make sense. I mean, people have been writing literature since, you know, Homer's time. Nothing about them being printed a hundred years ago or more makes them better than modern literature. And if you don't enjoy them, that's perfectly fine. I personally love reading classics. I love reading them from a wide range of time periods. Uh, I really like history and I think that literature from different periods of time can really offer insight into what it was like comparing to, you know, our values and the themes that we talk about in modern literature now. But overall, yeah, I believe in you. Oh yeah, if you're looking to get into them, I hope that you will give these a whirl and I hope that they will introduce you to the world of classics and make them seem a little less intimidating to you. Um, because obviously I do love reading classics and I'd love to be able to help other people um, find that same joy that I get in reading them. So let me know down below if you try any of these classics and if you have any other suggestions for classics to start with. And if you like this video, please do give it a like and subscribe and all my social media, my Goodreads and stuff are all in the links down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully see you soon with another video. Bye.